All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today I'm going around to these fig trees here. We're doing a little bit more pruning. As some of you guys probably saw that pruning video that we did the other week. Um, to me, it was extremely valuable information. I know it was really long, but it was extremely valuable information that I wanted to share with people. I know a lot of you guys appreciated it. It's honestly uh, many years of expertise put into one video. And we talked about it in that video, if you missed it, uh, the three main reasons why you'd want to prune your fig tree. I think there's actually more than three reasons, uh, but typically people want a larger fig tree, they want a smaller fig tree, or they want more figs. This video we're talking about pruning them if we're trying to set up the form, and we're doing a little bit of last minute pruning on the fig trees. And what I mean by last minute is that it's the spring, People, rec you know, people ask me all the time, Ross, when do you prune your fig trees? When, do you, when should you? And I think this is, now is a really great time because I'm noticing that this tree here was not overwintered and protected this winter time. It was just out here uh, in the open with no winter protection. And I'm seeing a lot of winter damage on this one main branch here. And it's actually quite tall, and I don't really want these tall branches on my fig trees. It just would form too big of a fig tree, especially for the rest of the trees in this plot. We have too many trees, and if one's bigger than the others, it can create some problems and shading and getting sunlight to some of the other trees. So I'm actually kind of happy that this is, <laughs> this is tied back. I can take this out. It's just so tall. It's taller than me. The scaffolds would form, uh, at least I would say, not the scaffolds, some of the fruiting branches and laterals will form at a really high height. And so this entire branch has got to come out now. Uh, and this is the beauty of pruning now in the spring. So when people ask me, Ross, when do you do it? The spring's a great time because then you get to see what's alive and what's not alive. You know, some of you guys live in such a mild winter place where you don't really get below 15 or 20. And, you know, that doesn't really matter, I guess, in terms of waiting until now. You could have just pruned it in the fall or the winter. Um, you know, you can even prune it during the growing season. It's not the end of the world. But this is really, I think, probably the best time for most people because you get to see what's alive and what's not. And then you can go from there. Once you know what your tree is doing, you can then decide and it takes a while believe it or not for these trees to really show their true colors see the color of this wood it's like red see the color of the same this is the same tree right next to it this is green uh, not that well lignified a browner color this is dead wood and you don't really see that unfortunately in the winter time it's really until the tree starts to wake up that you start to see this red coloration. You see it even further down on this branch and it goes all the way down, all the way as far as it goes. Here's like a red spot right there. It's almost like a rust color, orange color. Uh, this is dead wood. And if I do the scratch test, underneath here, there is no green. So that's how you know it's dead. Not just by the color, but by doing the scratch test. And if I scratch around in here, see how that's green? This is brown and the right color, but because this wood here is green and something below it is red and dead, we have to take out the entire branch or at least until all the way down to where the dead wood stops. And it doesn't really stop. It goes all the way down here to where the scaffold was created from this main trunk here. So we gotta take out the whole thing. I gotta get my saw and I gotta take out that entire branch. Um, but you know what? It's not a terrible thing. Now, the other reason why we might do some pruning is actually the training that we kind of talked about. Here are some trees actually right here in the middle of this row. There's three rows here. In the middle, there's about three trees that are about four-ish feet in height. Uh, we also have one right in front of you guys. The camera can't see it. Um, just because I, I should adjust it. Let me see here. Sorry about that, guys. But there's one right there in front of you guys. I don't know if you can see this. Let me see. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So this is actually another one. But all four of these, we need to do a very specific kind of cut on these four. Where we just have to remove the tip. I talked about in the last video uh, 
the long to oop tree at the end of that video, we mentioned that some trees have a lot of apical dominance and they have so much dominance where it actually prevents the trees from branching out. And they just want to go as high as possible to reach as much sunlight as possible. But if you remove the dominance, then you allow these other buds to start competing for that sunlight. And the tree then throws out all this other growth in different directions, which in these cases here, we have a single stem whip on these four trees. So we want to do that. We want to top them actually, remove this apical bud um, and allow them to remove that dominance to then of course start to form the scaffolds um, now. So this is the kind of the you know, kind of pruning we can do to really help train the trees. Some of the trees, you could probably leave the, the, the apical bud here alone and the tree would be fine. You know, I would argue it depends on the tree. Uh, some of them will naturally branch out on their own. Others, if you remove the tip, that'll force them to branch out. So just as like a precaution, I'm coming in here and I'm removing all these tips. So let me show you that right now make sure that if there's any noise there on the microphone i apologize but let me show you this just so you guys are aware of exactly how this works so here is one of the tips just prune that off and we're just removing the tip we're not removing anything else you can bring them back a little bit further if you want but i don't like doing that because as i've discussed in many other videos we keep the apical and lateral buds this is the apical bud the higher bud down here are the lateral buds. If I keep these lateral buds, the tree will be in hormonal balance. It won't grow like a crazy tree, but if I cut it so far back, it will grow very quickly this season. Now that could be a good thing. Um, some, some of you guys might want that, and that can be a really nice thing. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but some of you guys, in a lot of cases, I'm sure have heard of other fruit trees that when you plant them, you have a whip and you decide to plant the whip, but then when you plant it, after you put it in the ground, you wanna cut it back to your knee. So at knee height, that's the Dave Wilson nursery style recommendation. And honestly, for backyard growers, that's a great recommendation. I do that on my other fruit trees. On the figs, I don't do that uh, because I don't want them to grow too quickly. And the reason for that is if they grow too quickly here in zone sevens and six and five, maybe even parts like colder parts of zone eight, our tree might take a lot of damage next season and this upcoming winter because the trees, when they're out of that balance, they're gonna grow too much and the hormones are gonna be messed up and then they're not gonna lignify properly going into the winter time and they're just gonna keep taking damage in the winter time. And I'd rather just have them grow slower in these colder zones than not. So if I'm in, let's say zone eight or higher, cut it back, don't just remove the tip. That's, I think the recommendation that I would go with. If you're in these colder zones, just remove the tip. And that'll keep it in hormonal balance. It'll grow a little bit slower, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be much happier. Um, and so the nice thing, I, I don't think people really understand when you can, you know, really, understand these hormones i just want to end with this guys if you can really understand the hormones between the difference between taking off the tip and bringing it back to your knee or let's say removing a lot of the lateral buds then we can encourage the scaffolds to be really long and really tall like this tree because what exactly had happened with this one and why it took damage i mean this is the perfect example of what i just said this is a um variety here called uh it's similar to long to oot and it grew last year as a single stem i tried to overwinter it i pushed it all the way to the to the ground covered it with wood chips but because we're in zone seven and because the winter wasn't great and my protection wasn't great it did take damage and it didn't i did not i was not able to protect all the growth i was not able to protect the top of the tree the apical and lateral buds and so it got killed back even though some of it did survive, it is as if, instead of me doing the pruning myself, it's as if I came in here and cut the whip back to my knee. So this is a perfect example. It got cut back to the knee, 
and then it formed these scaffolds. And one of the scaffolds is ginormous, which, by the way, is not a terrible thing for those of us with more room, for those of us in warmer climates. But because I'm in zone seven, this tree then unfortunately got hit really hard by the cold. And this entire branch now has to come out. If it was a much colder winter instead of this mild winter we had, I may not get much fruit off of this tree at all this season. So rather than bringing it so far back, please take my advice. If you're in zone seven, just remove the tip. If you're in zone eight or above, uh, you know, you can go far back if you want. And you're going to see actually a larger benefit that way because these larger scaffolds that form, your tree then with larger scaffolds and longer scaffolds is able to reach for more sunlight. The more sunlight it reaches and the more space it can take up, the more fruit it's going to produce. If your scaffolds are shorter, well then the area your tree is growing in is obviously smaller, which means you get less figs. So, you know, I think that's really, really complex. Uh, well, it's not that complex, but it's really uh, detailed. But it's worth mentioning. And I hope you guys got through that. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Please do me a favor. Hit that like button for me. Hit the subscribe button. This information is so valuable to people that are growing fig trees. It's, it's rather simple. Sometimes it's a little counterintuitive. Uh, and, and, you know, this, a lot of this can be applied to other fruit trees as well. It's not just figs. So please do me a favor, share this one and check out my blog, figboss.com. We have a really good detailed article I'll put in the description about pruning. So many, actually few articles on pruning and we'll see you guys for the next one. All right. Take care.